The next uh, customer is uh, Vivek from a relatively bigger, bigger company, uh, from Philips, and they also have a great story to tell. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Sanjay Bhatt, I'm an R&D architect at Philips Lighting. So all of you know what Philips Lighting does, so I don't, that's the easy part for me. But what I'm here to talk about is what we do in <coughs> digital and connected lighting. So that's probably something that you're not familiar with. Uh, small video to showcase what we do. Light, essential to life. To illuminate every step of our journey. To make us feel safe and comfortable. To start us up or calm us down. To help our healing and improve our well-being. To better our concentration. Keep us focused throughout the day and through the night. a smile and brighten up our lives. That's why Philips has been revolutionizing lighting for over 125 years, bringing electric light to everyone and leading the way in LED. But light is also a powerful symbol for ideas, for better thinking and innovation. So what if lighting systems could carry all kinds of information and become part of our connected world? To connect things and make them intelligent and more useful. To increase energy efficiency and manage buildings in a more environmentally friendly way. cities safer and more responsive, to create experiences at home like never before, to improve the way the world works and people live, to make life better for all of us. This is a product of some of the most remarkable technology ever created. It's here, today, all around us, and it feels like magic. This is Philips Connected Lighting. Light beyond illumination. Innovation and you, Philips. <clears throat> yeah, so the key message there was, thank you. So the key message there was connected lighting and light beyond illumination, right? So what can lighting systems do beyond just providing light? So a little bit of statistics. Uh, the lighting market is a 65 billion euro market. Uh, we are a 7.4 billion euro company, Philips Lighting. So the number one in LED and connected lighting worldwide. So we are present in the public spaces such as cities, municipalities, office, so, uh, uh, highway lighting, office and industry, uh, retail and hospitality, that means supermarkets, so on, home spaces, uh, end consumer products. Uh, some of the projects that we have done recently is uh, 110,000 street lights in LA, which is uh, connected. So essentially, which means uh, that can be monitored remotely. Data is collected from them remotely. Uh, we have uh, all these many implementations. We have mobile apps and ecosystems that have that uh, cater to over that support over 600 third-party apps. So we have an ecosystem for developing mobile apps for lighting, and there are partners and customers who have developed more than 600 apps for us. Of course, we have integration with uh, the giants of the technology industry, Amazon Alexa, Apple's HomeKit, and Google Home. Uh, in terms of the number, in terms of the data, uh, we collect roughly about 100 gigabytes of raw data every day. Uh, so there is, a num there is also some statistics behind it. So when I say 100 gigabytes of raw data every day, it's just with 2% of connected lighting. So the whole, in the entire world, we just have 2% of lighting connected. So if you, can Im you can imagine what it means if we just ramp up this number very fast. So this brings into question what we have to do in order to 
have the right infrastructure for data analytics. So quickly on the products. Uh, so Philips Hue is a consumer product uh, which offers connected lighting at home. Uh, these bulbs can produce 16 million colors. You can control them with your phone. You can ask Alexa to turn them on. You can also, uh, if you get a mail or get a Facebook post, these lights can go on to, as indicators. So it's essentially an ecosystem. There are more than 600 apps developed for this by third-party developers who make money from the apps that they develop. Uh, Philips City Touch is our uh, street lighting management system for municipalities and cities. We also have offerings in the connected lighting space for office. So for, pe so for people to uh, use their mobile phones to personalize their lighting under their desks. Uh, what we here use is something called visible light technology. Uh, you can imagine light sending data to your phones, to the camera of your phones, and getting to know where exactly you are located. Right? So this is useful not just in the office, but also in places like the retail space. So imagine you are in a shopping market, right? Uh, we call it indoor positioning technology, pre perfect light for precise positioning. So you are in a shopping market. You want to know, you want to know uh, as a retailer which aisle the customer is walking in, right? So, so standing here versus standing here is very different in a retail store because here you could have chips, here you could have diapers, right? Now, I should be able to walk. The moment I walk here, I should get a promotion for chips. The moment I walk here, I should get a promotion for diapers. So we can do that with our dense network of lighting and sub-meter accuracy, pinpoint precision. Uh, so we are the Google for indoor, position, indoor navigation. Right? So this is rolled out in supermarkets in Europe and starting to roll out in the Middle East. So, this is the context. So now you can imagine my 100 GB per day is just going to increase immediately the moment I turn on all the taps here to start sending me data. So the challenge for me now is how do I actually deal with this data? So our scenario earlier was we had individual R&D teams who would have clusters of machines of their own on premise and choose their own technologies to make that happen. At one point, we realized we are getting nowhere with this. We need to have a centralized approach because data that we collect here could be useful here. By the way, everything is us. There is privacy and legal laws, so we cannot collect anything that users are not approved. Just putting that, making that out there. Actually. Right? So it means this team cannot operate in isolation with this team. So that's when we said we need to have a centralized or a common philosophy around data analytics. So of course, we operate out of Amazon. So what can we do with Amazon? So this is, at a high level, our data architecture. Uh, we have a data ingestion layer, which actually uh, is just a cluster of EC2, uh, EC2 instances uh, that scale as we need. Uh, we get data from the internet. This could mean social media data about our products. It could be in weather data that we collect and, and th all those sorts of things, because weather has a very key impact on the lighting. Uh, it may not be a big deal in India, but weather is a big deal in the Western world, believe me. So uh, then, of course, all our connected lighting devices, be it uh, the Philips Hue at home or our connected offices and street lights, uh, mobile apps. So all our projects being digital have mobile app connectivity. Uh, so uh, use cases are different, but uh, for example, at home, end users are using their apps to control the lights, but in the office, uh, an employee is using the lights to control the lights under the desk, over the desk. So, and of course, our own cloud services that, that, that support all these uh, devices in the field, uh, they also send data to us. Then uh, our first philosophy is do not meddle with the data that's coming in, just store it as is. So we have a direct pipe to Amazon S3 to, in order to do that. Uh, then we have use cases that can either be streaming, so near real time use cases, or use cases where we don't need to know the results 
immediately, we can wait for a day, for example. So in the, in the case where we need bulk data processing, we use Amazon EMR's uh, technology to do uh, either MapReduce or Spark jobs. So individual teams get to choose what, they, what, what kind of processing jobs they want to run. Uh, there is no one size fits all. Uh, we also stream the same data to a stream processing engine, uh, which is largely Apache Kafka based. Uh, these are for use cases where uh, we need uh, close to near, uh, close to real time uh, turnaround on the results. So one of the use cases I, ca I can describe here is uh, we have uh, we support energy optimization of buildings and space optimizations in a floor. So based on our sensors in an office area, we can judge what is the energy consumption required in a particular space, how many users are around in the space, so do I need to relocate some people to another part of the building? As a building manager, I can choose that because, of the, because as we move towards flexible office uh, workspaces, that is possible. So we have to be able to detect at near real time what is the energy consumption in area, what is the occupancy rates in an area. So uh, these are the spaces. So quickly on what we do, so how we use uh, some of the Amazon technologies. So we believe monitoring and alerting is pretty important. Uh, so we need to be able to detect how our machines are, be, uh, are behaving, uh, how our applications are running. So we use uh, our clusters run AMIs that have uh, metrics agents baked in them. Uh, all the metrics from these uh, clusters get streamed to Kinesis, uh, which, which report real time towards, to a metric gateway, and then we get monitoring on, the screens, on our screens. Uh, if there are critical issues, then the applications flag them. We push that to an SQS queue, uh, routed to uh, email notifications, as well as we have Slack channel, which alerts, that, alerts us that something's wrong in the system. Uh, lastly, we use Amazon's uh, Elasticsearch service to do, to offer logging services to our development teams uh, in, order to do, in order to be able to, for them to actually collect logs from their application services and for them to provide dashboards on uh, various application states. That's you know, just what we do. Thank you.